Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into this. On the left-hand side, we've got the members of Smoke with a Dahaka, Sylvanas, Rhaegar, Garrosh, and Tychus. On the right, it's going to be Gambit Gaming, and they're going to have themselves a Stukov, Hogger, Diablo, Vala, and Junkrat. I'm just going to double-check the player names really quickly. Um, Alfie is on the side of Gambit Gaming, and Alfie is on the right-hand side of the map. Ten seconds. The biggest thing I hope for it is that it uh, is I feel like no one wants sparkly vampires. Is that, like, not the thing in the book? Do they not sparkle in the sun? Did they not sparkle in the sunlight in the book? <laughs> that would be like one of your poly worlds. Uh, Gambit's up and available for Cree to the Hunter on Vala. Will she have 200 more stacks or 199 or less? Get your gambles in, chat. Get your Twitch predictions in if you'd like to do so. You could put all your points on this. And then someone else could match you. And then maybe you win. Or lose. I don't know. Garrosh chilling in the bush just above this in mid lane. Little fire stomp out from Diablo might have scouted. As a reminder, we're here in Division B of NGS, so we have stepped down one division, but these are still very talented and good players. What if you don't? Uh, Bandit will be sad. And if you don't gamble, Bandit will be sad. You bet 1.5k, Bandit won't be, now Bandit won't be sad. Uh, Hans, thank you for the hydrate. Appreciate that. Honestly, the biggest thing that I need at the grocery store is butter. I don't have, like, I don't have much butter in the house, and I need that for breakfast every day. For eggs and toast. Uh, a little bit of poke here and there. No level 4, so no soul to flame for Diablo currently. Uh, tissue regeneration to Haka, groundbreaker for the Garrosh, five stacks on those autos for the Vala, and the fetid touch on the Stukov. Hogger's trait, because no one takes trait build. <clears throat> that one person I played Storm League with. Which then, I don't know if it was them or someone else in chat was like, you're expecting your players to play like, like, meta, meta top tier drafts. And I was like, no, I just expect them to be competent with, with their talent choices and not, not just be out there being like, well, I believe this is wrong, so it's wrong. I will say this, back in the HCC days, NA was the most stuck up when it came to meta. And you know I'm right, too. Like, NA would decide, like, Sergeant Hammer's bad! So no one in HCC NA would play it. And then, then, and then Korea would literally be like, Hey, Western Clash, you don't know how to play against a Sergeant Hammer? Alright, time to get bodied! <laughs> That's the truth. Like, EU was pretty decent at, at like, developing good... Like drafts and stuff, and and and, but NA was just so like stuck up about how they like if the, if NA decides the hero's bad, then no one plays it. I mean, go go look at HCC China. So many regions where like Sylvanas is bad, and then you go to HCC China, and it's like first pick, first ban material. And then and then NA and E would play against these teams, and they'd be like, I don't know how to play against the Sylvanas, and then they get bodied. To be fair, Korea is just better, so I don't think the meta is a major factor. Well, but no, absolutely, you're proving my point more. Korea is better because they're not stuck up in their own opinions, like NA. <laughs> That's the truth, though. Like, Korea is more open-minded to, 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 to doing these unique, different drafts and trying to figure out do they work or not. Whereas NA was like, nope, it doesn't work. Not even gonna look at it. I mean, look at NA outside of uh, video games. We can't pump. We're, we're difficult on other things, too. Anyways, uh, so we have our objective phase being worked on right now between both these teams. It seems like Gambit Gaming is going to be coming out on top of this, but as I look at the Skeletal Defender count, it is smoke starting to rise rapidly. And it's 36 to 35. Junkrat's trying to poke in here and there. Rhaegar and friends are going to be able to get this. Yes, it will be first Punisher over the side of smoke. Uh, Junkrat, you're dead. 
Oh, wait, no, Junkrat's not dead. I thought he was about to get punched once more, and I think the Punisher would have killed him on that last punch, but it doesn't happen. The fort front gate goes down, the Punisher drops low, Dahaka and Hogger are going to be split soaking as the bottom lane camp will be grabbed. Smoke if you got him. Alrighty, well, uh, no, it's ev it's even experience. I was I was Dahaka is gonna catch mid lane and that's gonna equalize and experience is like they're slightly behind with a kill, but that's just Dahaka needing to catch up. And as I mentioned, he does have the uh, tissue regeneration level one, hero stalker, and the synergy of symbiosis at level seven on that. So it's actually a really really fun build because of the cooldown reduction on your symbi on your dark swarm. You're getting essence from hero stalker, and that's going to compile into tissue regeneration as well. Also, you're getting essence off of regeneration globes, which are really nice a little bolster from uh, when you're, especially when you're doing some double soak duties like this. Arcane Punisher from mid lane coming up next. Vala with 24 stacks currently. Diablo Fire Stomp scouts out the enemy. Uh, MJH is looking to see Groundbreaker finish up by Garage. The Tychus is going to activate his minigun. He's got dings at level 4. He's got 35 currently. On this Garage is so very low, it does not go down. Uh, Krenovast is able to get the Haunting Wave out. Tychus works on the camp. Dahaka's chilling here as well. Uh, just checking really quickly. Dahaka does have Brush Dock if he wants to rush to top lane to clear things out. Hogger in mid lane is managing the minion wave, but he's going to need to back off soon as the enemies are going to be around. Savannah's is actually a hard thing. She won't join in to pressure the Hogger any further. A little bit of poke from Junkrat. Concussion Mine dashed away by MJH. Nicely done from Tychus. Ten talent here almost here. We cycle through those other numbers. Get an idea of what the damage healing experience looks like here in map number one of our third best of three of the day. And as always, if you're having a good time here watching on Twitch, be sure to follow. If you'd like to support further, it's very much appreciated as we do full-time stream. we got some sub goals that we'd like to hit. So every little bit of uh, support helps us out a ton. Uh, and if you're watching on the YouTube side of things, as we are putting these up on YouTube, it is, uh, be sure to like and subscribe so we can grow the YouTube page. And, uh, if you're watching here on Twitch, you can use Exclamation YouTube to subscribe over there with your multiple Google accounts, because everyone has multiple Google accounts. We've got a Commandeer Odin, Decimate Garrosh, Ancestor Healing, Mind Control Sylvanas, and Isolation on the Dahak on the opposing side. As the Arcane Punisher will be announced fairly soon in the mid lane, it's going to be a Hortipult Hogger, Flailing Swipes on the Stukov, Apocalypse on your Diablo, Reign of Vengeance Vala, and Riptire for the Junkrat. As Fallen Shamans will be traded out here, Hogger doesn't get the best spin, but that's alright, no big deal. It's like it's my job to know these things, because the Shrine is going to activate here in 25 seconds. Tank looks familiar. What, baby whale? Main tank to Haka? Or main tank Chelsea on the Hogger? <laughs> How you doing today, Northern Touch? Good to see you. Welcome to the stream. All right. Dahaka's almost done with his level one tissue regeneration. We've got Fetid Touch, nine out of 15. We'll have 38 stacks of the Vala auto attack and Diablo needs a fire stomp to go through the enemy and we'll be able to finish out his soul stone. We are post level 10, so he consumes less. It's gonna be an apocalypse activated. Flailing Swipes coming off from Stukov. It looks like our Garrosh is able to use Indomitable to back away, gets the Ancestor Healing. The Riptar from Junkrat will be interrupted and doesn't get the explosion he's looking for. Chelsea on the Hogger able to get away right there and does not go down to Tychus overkill, but the objective phase has been started. Dahaka looks for a drag. Tychus on 50 stacks of his, uh, I'm blank, in the rhythm, sorry, 50 stacks on the rhythm, which means that increases his overall in the rhythm duration to 4.5 seconds, if I'm not mistaken. I believe it's three seconds baseline, but right now, Commandeer Odin's out. 25 out of 40 skeletal defenders. Mind control on Diablo getting pulled in. Reign of Vengeance from the Vala. Decent damage being applied from her. She's on 60 stacks of her level one. Diablo pulls apart MJH, but it might be MJH slicing through uh, that Diablo health bar with that minigun active. 39. Dahaka's got his... No one saw that, Dahaka. It's okay. No one saw that drag. Hogger goes to top lane to try and push up this Fallen Shaman. Diab uh, Dahaka's already here, so he'll make a quick clear of that. Saw so what? Exactly. Black Arrow's activated by Sylvanas. Rhaegar's getting pushed around here. 24 seconds to go on Ancestor Healing. Riptire will be ripping through 
Rhaegar's health, and that'll be Concussion Mind zoning the enemies as well. Punisher jumps over, looking for some decent damage. On to Junkrat and Punisher. Nexus forces OPOP -OP, take down the Junkrat. So the Punisher working overtime, getting that kill, get some decent damage onto the mid lane fort front gate. That was the second Punisher of the game. 13 towns here, almost here. Groundbreaker, brush stock in from Dahaka. Apocalypse activated by the Diablo. Hogger getting a little bit low, looks for a bounce out, tags the camp. He's going to bounce back into Dahaka, who's trying to get some essence off of that Dark Swarm. Pops the essence, but unable to survive long enough for that to trigger. Alfie, one or two more autos will be enough, and that is exactly the case. Vala finds the triple kill for the allies. Nicely done for Gambit Gaming. It is a four for four kill in this best of three map number one. But of course, with those later game kills, Gambit Gaming will be moving ahead in their experience a little bit faster. As you can see, almost a level lead. Frozen Punisher top next. Did you see how Jeff? Be Did you see how Junkrat died? That's a sample of what happens to Jeff Bezos when you use your Prime Gaming here at twitchtv slash Bahama Gaming. That's true. That's true. That's exactly it. Devastating charge, level 13 for the Diablo. Hitting enemy heroes against terrain reduces their armor by 20 for four seconds. As a reminder, the term armor means physical and spell. Unless it's specified, armor means both. But we always like to, you know, we always like to mention these things just, just for, just for maybe sometimes there's new viewers, sometimes there's there's viewers that don't know everything there is to know about Heroes of Storm. So we like to clarify. We like to teach through casting. Fetid touch has been completed. Also has the long pitch level seven. Virulent reaction level 13 was picked up as well. Dahaka Hogger in top lane having a little brawl between those two. Vala chilling just above everything. Alfie may be looking to jump into this fight. 90 stacks currently, and Vala has died twice, so she's down to 15% on the bonus attack speed for the Gambit. Weighted Pustle connecting onto Shunanananan. Fire Stomp will say hello as well. Diablo Fallen Souls. Con concussion Mine allows Junkrat to get away, especially with Ripper Air. Upgrade on level 13. 16 almost here for the side of Gambit Gaming, and it looks like they're just kind of turtled up waiting for that 16 to come to them, and I don't blame them. I mean, you have the advantage. You have mid lane fort on a few percent of HP, 675 HP currently, a couple percent, and uh, this camp will almost get 16 talents here, Junkrat poking on bottom lane, but 16 has been picked up. Uh, Manticore's the big thing to note for the Vala. We also will see Diablo continuing with Domination level 16 and Junkrat with the infinite nades. All right, also big thing to note, all heroics and all charges of multi-charge heroics, Decimate and Reign of Vengeance off cooldown. Hogger in top lane. Okay, that's a beautiful staggering blow. Dahaka gets the essence popped and the burrow. He's shadow charged in the wall. He's dead. Baby Whale is going to be going down. That's a good chunk of experience once again. There will be a fort going down in bottom. It seems like they're just going to shove bottom lane since they lost the Dahaka. They'll need to send, like, one hero back. It's going to be, oh, yeah, like, leave Hogger on the objective and send one back, and this is the right call because then you can siege in with more. No, they're going to send Diablo and and uh, Stukov back. No, they're not even sending Stukov back. They're just going to trade the fort for the fort, bottom for top. But here's the thing. Yeah, you're getting keep front gate, but now this is the enemy team pushing in. They're going to have Punisher as well, and they're going to soften up this keep front gate. This could be a game-winning push. This is being, yeah, this, this, uh, I, you gotta give this up right here. Like, I, I understand the game plan. Give this up and, and just go defend, because you're gonna lose out way too much. And when the Punisher jumps over the wall, there will be no wall to, to kind of buffer between you and the enemy heroes, as, uh, the gate has a small amount of HP left over. I think Valen friends might be trying to throw a quick W or Q onto the mid fort. No, they're not gonna go for it. Hogger! He's slowing down on this objective area, allowing Junkrat and friends to make some rotations, pick up some more experience, push out the waves. And as I said, maybe, maybe go for mid lane fort, but it doesn't seem like that's the call. Punisher to top lane, four to five in kills currently. Impalers on both sides will go into mid lane. 95 stacks on the Vala currently. Frozen Punisher for top. Frozen very, 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 very strong. Good siege value to be picked up with this. Will the Forsaken activated from Sylvana. She pulls the Punisher, but that gate, as I mentioned, is already down. 
Weighted Pusher going out. Decimate from Garrosh. Pops the Indomitable. Riptire from the Junkrat. Ford in mid lane goes down to that Impaler camp, as I mentioned earlier. Riptire coming through, focusing on a Sylvanas. She's got some healing over time, as she did tap the well. Mind Control goes fishing. No prime subs in this matchup. Groundbreaker attempted by Garrosh. No connection onto the enemy. Diablo's spell and physical armor being reduced a little bit right there. Tower shots reducing all the armor. Jump from Punisher towards the mid lane, and it seems like this will be a disengage from Gambit Gaming. Not looking to end, but they are one level away from level 20 talent here. And this is still a level disparity as it's about level 18 to level 19. Augur doesn't get the best bounce. He cancels it early. Stukov's the one tossed out of position. Flailing swipes activated. Apocalypse as well. Vala picks up her 100th stack. And uh, Grenade is going to snipe. Melting point Grenade with the upgrade of that quarterback. So 10% uh, extra damage, but you also have the melting point with the three damage over time as well. So nicely done from Tychus. He gets the snipe onto Stukov. Groundbreaker fi finds this Diablo. Decimates are slowing him down. Earth Grasp Totem will uh, hold Diablo in place. Tahaka burrows in as the tunneling claws. Not sure if he's going to look for a drag. Lands it onto Diablo immediately. Concussion Mine won't save this time. And that will be Diablo's souls expended. Catapults are on the core currently. They do fixate into structure, so they won't focus onto the wave whatsoever. And uh, Catapults are going to scratch the shielding, but I don't think they're actually going to take down any HP. Also because Baby Will is back here at the core, and he'll be able to yeah, auto once. Not even needed. Bottom lane keep is being poked at here. Sylvanas activates Black Arrows. A little easy throw dynamite from Hogger. Haunting wave uh, from Krenovas. That is a rip tire getting some hits onto enemies, but no level 24 extra oomph cooldown. The Hawk, as I mentioned, pushed out top. He's going to get a good chunk of experience through mid. And honestly, the members of uh, Smoke, they're looking to really rally here in map number one and roll this back in their favor. What's up, Ektar? How you doing today, bud? Good to see you, dude. Happy Thursday to you. Are you excited for the next episode of Delicious Dungeon? I that like, I talk about it all the time. Chat, if you have not seen Delicious Dungeon on Netflix, go watch it. You are missing out. It's so good, and it's kind of wholesome to be honest. Like the jokes are like the the. I don't know the, the the I like the jokes like. I find it very good. I very much I very much recommend Delicious Dungeon. It, it it's just wholesome and fun. What is Delicious Dungeon? It is an anime on Netflix based off of a manga about adventurers going through dungeon and eating food in the dungeon. It's 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 very it's very wholesome. Like like there's not a but like it's not like uh, it's not like Konosuba where you have like what is it, like episode two the main protagonist is like holding some girl's panties out in 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 a courtyard. That is legitimately a scene in that in that anime. You don't have the paladin constantly trying to endure pain for for what seems like sexual reasons. That's yeah, very it's very wholesome, very very wholesome. Honestly, Zool rules. I'm thinking about actually getting getting a book or two of it. What's up, non champion? A fellow flawless technique. By the way, non-champion, there was an auto-attack Hanzo earlier today that took Flawless Technique at 16, and I'm like, you know, I gotta kinda try that. That might be interesting. They took Redemption at 1, Flawless Technique at 20, or at 16. Uh, they went Explosive Error at 4, and the cooldown reduction on W at 7. So no, um, no Dragon Hungers, but oh, it was interesting. It was a very interesting build. Flailing swipes from Stukov. The Ancestor Healing gets the Farseer's Blessing uh, secondary heal. Keep in mind, Sylvanas went for the upgrade on Mind Control, and she just had that come off a of cooldown. Activates Will the Forsaken to get away from the Vala, who has currently 144 stacks. Smoke is on fire right now. How can Smoke be on fire? Scientifically, that makes no sense. <laughs> I'm a big flawless. You know, I need to try flawless redemption. I've never like the logic makes sense. Yeah, I need to try. I need to try auto attack Hanzo with with flawless. I couldn't make it through Konosuba. Way too many TOS and TOS jokes. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
Personally, I love Darkness, the the paladin in that in that show. And I like Megami's character's cute and everything, but meh. It's all right. Like it's it's. It's one. I, I feel like it's one of those TV shows I kind of have to be in the mood for. Riptire from Junkrat coming out right now. Uh, extra oomph 20. No, he went cannonballs. Garrosh is going to go down. Got cleansed, but that doesn't matter. Apocalypse from Diablo activated. Commandeer Ojin will be coming out from Tychus. Garrosh is the one to go down. Big Red Button's going to be summoned here. Punisher in this bottom lane is pushing in. I want to remind you that there's a decent wave in mid so and, and a huge wave in top. So if this goes south for the side of smoke, they, they could be lo losing the game here. Alfie's able to get away with like 43 HP. Mid keep does go down. Commandeer own throwing in a big red button, but now they're getting a little nervous here. Granted, they are they are shredding through this health currently, and they're backing away, and I really think that was the wrong call. I think they could have committed for the end right there, but we'll see what's going to happen right now. Big red button coming out. Mind control gets the, excuse me, actual mind control kind of sets up the double kill. Big red button gets the double kill. Mid lane, yeah, they got to start, they got to start going aggressive siege right here, because they're already losing their core shielding. Okay, they've only lost the core shielding. I thought this minion wave was a lot closer to the, the, the core. But this is going to be map number one over to the side of smoke. I don't think that uh, Gambit Gaming can find any sort of counterplay. Granted, Vala's getting some decent damage. Krenovast getting low. But it's not an oh no core. This will be map number one over to the side of smoke. Yeah, no, I agree with you exactly, Zool Rules. I agree with you. My wife liked Konosu because of the subversion of the uh, escape. I can never pronounce that word right, but I, yeah. I haven't seen enough uh, animes to have appreciation for the subversion. But how many stacks? Uh, taking redemption at one, auto attack speed, floss technique at 16, more AQ damage. Yeah. So redemption at level one doubles Hanzo's attack speed because Hanzo is a fairly slow attack speed. And Flawless Technique uh, gives you a crap load of damage on your next auto attack after hitting an enemy hero with a Stormbow. So you Q an enemy hero and then auto attack him. And the Q build that I go, so I go like Q at 1, usually Q at 4, uh, Dragon Awakens or Dragon Hungers at level, at level 7, and then Flawless at 16. And then it's usually like with a Q auto, I deal like a thousand-ish damage. 180 stacks for the Vala. 180, so 199 or less. Payout's been paid. Ah, quality tea today. It's a pretty good tea today. All right, uh, let's bring it on back to Bandit and I. My points, they're back at you. Right back at you. All right. Well, otherwise, hope you're all doing well today. Hope you've been enjoying the stream. Uh, now's a good time to remind you that uh, we're going to run a small block of ads. So if you have Amazon Prime, you've got Prime Gaming. And if you've got Prime Gaming, you've got a free sub here at twitch.tv slash Bahamut Gaming. You can get yourself some ad-free viewing. Get yourself some amazing emotes. You support the good boy that's Bandit. You, you help us continue our full-time streaming. And, of course, as always, I have a deal with John Cena. He's going to go ahead and tiptoe into Jeff Bezos' house, and he's going to sneak $2.50 out of Jeff Bezos' pocket, and then throw Jeff Bezos off the second story floor into a pool. So if you would like to uh, throw Jeff Bezos into a pool and steal some money, be sure to Prime today. I wish I could gift my Prime sub. That'd be cool as hell. That'd be great. That'd be that'd be great from Twitch. But Twitch doesn't like us making money, do they? <laughs> How many uh, sub point thingies am I at so far this month? I'm curious. I think it's um. I think they started the new thing where if I have like a hundred subs points for like three months straight, I get like partner plus or whatever. Starting January 24th, 2024, uh, starting May 1st, expand, oh, it's May 1st? Oh, I have a while to go. We're lowering the point threshold for the 70-30 to 300 points, uh, and are introducing a 60-40 tier at 100 plus points for three consecutive months. So it is, it is, it is points. It's not subs. 
And for those of you who don't know, tier threes and tier twos give more sub points. Uh, do 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 do. Tier ones give one, tier twos give two, and tier threes give six sub points. That started in February. I just looked at it and did I read it wrong? Partner plus overview. Uh, January 24th, 2024, no more U.S. $100 annual cap value. The annual cap value on 7030 is not, is net revenue, uh, is eliminated. Starting May 1st, 2024, we're expanding Partner Plus. We are lowering the point threshold to inter and, and introducing a new 6040 tier earned at 100 points. I'm pretty sure this is starting May 1st. I'm going to assume that on May 1st, they will be introducing the 6040. According to my Twitch article. Notice, on January 2024, Twitch announced changes to few monetary decisions. Uh, is this a different blog post? Is there a newer blog post? Uh, do -do -do -do. In October, we launched this, blah, blah, blah. We're expanding 100 points, but when? When did, does it say when? Writing a new level, broader streamers, do, 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 do. But when? Uh. Da, 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 da. I don't see when this is actually gonna start. Outside of the last article that literally says May 1st. I, I I don't see anything new. It just says in May. Does it say in May? Uh, where are, da, 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 nope. Um, partner plus. Free gift of subs. Oh, there you go. Yeah, uh, when changes, there it is. This means this will also need to change the Partner Plus program. Uh, will be known as the Plus program, and the changes take effect in May. Thank you, thank you. I read above the table. Thank you. So we still got a while. We still got a while to go for that. Okay. All right. Anyways, uh, map number two. We we just ran some ads, so that actually worked out really good for us. Map number two in this best of five, best of three series. Excuse me. I've been hearing people saying they successfully got last month uh, for the 100, but I'm uncertain if they actually get confirmations. Yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly how it's going to work, but I, I don't have to worry about this till May, so. I don't know. I don't know where this uh, download went, so I need to re-download the map. I wonder if it means that May is the first month they'd be able to get it. Um. I'm just skimming through this. I don't I don't really see anything that clarifies that. If it if it's May that they start counting then it goes against what they said at first. Well, keep in mind if you if you scroll down, there's an area, there's a little box that says help me get partner plus and there's a box that you can click to find out more information. But when you go to that, when you go to that blog post, there's a big red box above that that says that there's another blog post. And then that blog post is like newer, I think, that is slightly more ambiguous. <laughs> that's why that's why I was looking at both of those blog posts because I think one was released and then there was like a another one that was, I, I don't know. Whatever, whatever. Uh, well, we'll see in May. I mean, that's really the only answer. We'll see in May. We'll see in May. 
I hopefully we get there. All right, so uh, map has been loaded. No, it hasn't. I downloaded it and then I got distracted again. Players are on the same sides. You like to see it. Let's see if we can get a fun little gamble going on here. Uh, we already did one for the Va We already did one for a Vala. So let's see if we can get something fun. If there's a level one questing talent. Auto attack build for oh Sylvanas is gonna go unfurling shadows. Let's do a prediction for that. Uh, unfurling shadows. Hmm. <laughs> how many stacks? Uh, how many level one stacks for Sylvanas? Sylvanas. Did I spell her name right? I feel like I didn't. Anyways, doesn't matter. Let's say do 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 one twenty or more one. 19 or less. Why did I think of these numbers? I don't know. They just popped in my head, and that's what I decided on. We kept the teams on the same side for all matches. Baby Whale, good. Thank you. Thank you for being a team player for me. Thank you. I appreciate that. Your, your effort has not gone unnoticed. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, into the best of three series, our third one of the day. We've got Division B here for the Nexus Gaming Series. Smoke on the left-hand side with a Dahaka, Sylvanas, Rhaegar, Johanna, and Falstad. On the right, it's going to be Gambit Gaming with a Vala, Tassadar, Nubarak, and Anduin, and Sonya. Now, uh, if you know the results to, the, to this gamble, you are welcome to predict. Just don't try and tease it in chat. Don't try and spam, or don't try and, like... Don't try and give it away. If you know the results, you are welcome to gamble. Just throw your channel points on and silently win. Uh, Unfurling Shadows will be our level one. Now, how does this work? Each time an enemy hero with three stacks of Banshee Curse is hit by Shadow Dagger, its damage is permanently increased by 5%. So we're going to stay on Sylvanas for the vast majority of this game uh, because then you'll be able to see who she's marked. There'll be little uh, arrow dots next to the name. And then if she throws her W on a, on a target that has three of those dots... She starts scaling that. So that is your gamble. That's the explanation. You still got another minute thirty to get your gambles in. You didn't pay any. You didn't pay attention to anything Sylvanas did. How dare you not pay attention to every single one of your teammates and not micromanage them around? That's so rude of you. So rude of you to do your job. And a good job at that. Alrighty. So that's all good that's all rolling on out auto attack build for the vala northern touch able to back away on the anubarak with a burrow charge out mjh just 50 percent auto attack build on the falstead dahaka is going to go into tissue regeneration now we could see a similar build from last game with the hero stalker and symbiosis up against the sonya and then this team fighting around the objective area no one saw that MJH is our macro shot caller, and Shunnanananananan is our team fight shot caller. Nice. I mean, that's kind of how it should be, really. Solo lane does solo lane things, reports when solo lane's missing, and gives updates here and there, but most of the time, you're eating a sandwich and just clearing waves, you know? One hand sandwich, one hand waves. <laughs> Force wall down from the Tassadar, not allowing any sort of chase into this mid lane, but it's not going to stop their rotations from happening. Do -do -do -do. One of the teams ends up winning. Is there a mod to time out Zig the Cat, please? I don't feel like doing it. I'll let my mods do it. I'm getting a little 69 on Zig the Cat for spoiling the outcome of this game. Oh my god! Ektar, calm down! 542 seconds? Jesus Christ! <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, 157 seconds. Why? Why would you time someone out for that long? That's just rude. That's just rude. And don't give me some bullshit like, well, I didn't know how you wanted, Bahama. You know the meme in this channel. Bad mod. Bad mod. You're about to lose your you're about to lose your mod ship, but I'm not kidding. Ten stacks for our false dead currently. Zero on the Sylvanas thus far. Let's see if she's gonna be able to get some stackage here around the objective phase. 
4% in such charging for smoke right now, as they have a top lane camp being managed by the enemy Tassadar. Did go Psy Storm with Electric Fence. Uh, Gallus, thank you for the Prime Gaming for five months. We'll resend your alert when we get out of game. I appreciate that support greatly, and thanks for your Prime. Seven talents here on the side of Gambit Gaming. Sorry, Jealous. Gotta say your name incorrectly. Krenovasta, will you drop the... Yep, 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 yep. And they won't be dropped. No, oh, Dubrak Burrow Charge Impale! Oh my god. But here's the thing. You know for a fact that if, if Savannah didn't activate that fortification camp, if she didn't throw that down, she would have died and lost it. That's that's the double-edged sword of that situation. I'm glad you remembered. Yeah, sorry, sorry I pronounced your name correctly. Festering Wounds level 7 for Savannah is pretty big because the Haunting Wave applies three stacks of Banshee's Curse. Doing timeout, doing slash timeout time should reset the timer, not add to it. Imagine working so hard to get timed out for 69 seconds and the mods No, 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 the mods did not fail you. Just Ektar did. Just Ektar. <laughs> Grinovast is gonna live? Regenerate- That is the second time. Grinovast should have died and is able to get away. No kill onto the Savannah's overtime on this objective. There's actually a bit of a brawl down over here. Baby Whale is doing their best to- back on out. They do have that Symbiosis and Hero Stalker combo as I mentioned before, so nicely done. Able to sustain quite well off of that. Alright, 10 talents here, almost here. 4 stacks on the Sylvanas. Let's cycle through the other numbers, get an idea of what those look like with the 10 talents here popping up soon at the top of your screen. It is going to be a secret weapon for, this, uh, for the false stab. Alright, Trigger Lot Protector immediately goes over to the side of Smoke. Where are they going to take this? What's the game plan? False stab jumps in. Lambie is also able to get inside. Sylvanas will stay out. Bunch of beetles being summoned by a new Barak. We do have a Reign of Vengeance, uh, do 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 do, who, Ar Archon. I could, I, I could not remember Archon's name. Oh, my apologies. I didn't realize there was a fight happening in mid lane. Uh, but it is gonna be Archon, Cocoon, Light Bomb, and Leap from Sonya. None of those heroics were used to take down the Jahana. Punisher Triglob is gonna get a sidewall and a ta- Oh, this is a very not- this Triglov is not getting much value for the side of smoke, and that is unfortunate. They lose their Jahana. They will pick up the 10s, but this Triglov is, yeah, they're, they're going all the way defense. Literally, they're getting, do they're getting dove under tower on the Triglov. That's wild. Isolation, Wailing Arrow, Ancestor Healing, Bless Shield, and Gust for False Dead. Hey, Nancy. Fortification camp grabbed here. Welcome, Nancy. Good to see you. I hope you're doing well today. I hope, I hope there's been some positive direction with your internet issues. Good morning, good morning. Oh my god, sorry. Also, uh, just reminded me, I'm really excited for, we're watching Galaxy Quest in Discord tomorrow, so if you want to come by, we're doing that at 3 o'clock my time. I live on the West Coast, so that's 3 o'clock West Coast, 6 o'clock East Coast, and Midnights in Central Europe. Shockray from Tassadar, MJH taking a bit of damage here. Cocoon will connect onto Johanna, Gust immediately. They break her out, but now leaping from Sonya, barrel roll away. Rhaegar goes down before he's able to cast Ancestor Healing. Savannah has three marks on Northern Touch and might throw the... Might throw the... Shadow Dagger out. It looks like it actually didn't connect, and only 13 stacks currently for the Vala. There has been. You're getting new service next week. Let's go! My back! My back! Uh, thank you, I. <laughs> thank you for that. 
Oh god, I love that alert. Oh, Nancy. I'm so excited for you. I really, really hope all that is going to be in the past and you don't have to deal with that anymore. Little barrel roll away from Falstead. I actually just got my newest USP, the battery backup for my modem and router. And that is installed. The math that I did, I currently need 80 watts of support, so I got a battery backup that has 300 watts. <laughs> I was like, you know what? Let's go a little overkill. And lit I'm not exaggerating. Literally the only two things in that battery backup will be the, my modem and router. That's it. I thought that button was auto 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, if you hover the button, Nectar, it actually literally says timeout Nectar for 600 seconds. The button's for 10 minutes. You can literally hover over it. Um, unless you don't have the, I have the mod thingies on my chat. Can you untime them out? Please? <laughs> you just timed someone out for 10 minutes and then just left them to sit. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't say... Oh, it did. Oh, I did see it. I didn't... I didn't... I literally didn't even see the message. It was right there. I just blended the two messages together in my when I was looking at it. Objective phase is up and available in the top lane. We've got control point B over to the side of Gambit Gaming for the time. They've got half a level to go for level 16. Things are looking pretty good here in map number two for this uh, Division B crew to take us to a map three. But, of course, there is a lot of games still left. Only one structure's fallen. Falstad flies to the top lane, throws out the hammering, and gets a couple autos onto Alfie as the haunting wave from Savannah's was not going to be activated. When I hover the button, it just says timeout username. Oh, really? Yeah, when I hover the button, it literally says timeout Ektar for 600 seconds. Timeout forget what for 600 seconds. I just literally typed slash T-I tab and then the person's name. Like tab is my best, tab is your best friend in Twitch. Also, it works for auto-completing some uh, emotes as well. Like BTTV emotes uh, can be tabbed into. Uh, boo -boo -boo -boo. We have more trig love over to the side of Gambit Gaming as they hit 40% and win back on 16 talent tier advantage. Manticore for Vol is a big one, and I wonder I wonder if they take this Triglob just into top lane and try and get consistent catapult pressure through this. I mean, Vala is pushing up the waves. That is, con that is convenient for that particular maneuver, yeah. And if you're on if you're on computer, I mean, you can easily. Oh my God, that leap from Sonya is massive, and Krinovast is the one to go down. Savannah's picked off here in the mid lane as the Triglav Protector will be picked up. Andu in the one inside. Alfie on this Tassadar very low gets inside the bottom committer for some extra healing, and this will be Triglav confirming mid lane fort. Your hover says 602. Ah, who knows? Actar could just be lying to us like he always is. <laughs> We actually, Stark and I had this conversation when I ran a rerun uh, a couple weeks ago when I went to uh, the Surgeon meeting. And we were talking about this because people were complaining that they can't see the full stream title on their phones. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I can do that. I can literally see full stream titles on my stream, other people's streams, streams that I'm not subbed to either. So it's not like, oh, I'm subscribed, so the UI is different. Like, literally, and Stark and I were sharing screenshots of the same streams to each other. And he has, a, he has like a Samsung phone. I have a Google Pixel. And I literally just think it has to do with how the code is written for those phones. And also, you know, phone screen scaling size. So. Anyways. I do have a doctor's appointment tomorrow in the middle of stream, so I'm just gonna throw up a rerun during the middle of stream and then go to the doctor and then come back. Triglop Protector's over. Forts have all fallen. Keep Front Gate takes a bit of damage. Five to one in kills. And Gambit Gaming, they're looking for this map number three. Sonya doing a bit of macro play right now. Pushing up mid and top. Soaking up a good chunk of experience. Closing into 20 talents here. It is going to be a two and a half level difference. Surrounding, it's three and a half. 
Uh, rounding down, it's three and a half level, or three level difference, sorry. 16 to 19. As Biota Commander's grabbed, Fortification Camp grabbed. Uh, Ninja, by the way, what'd you get for your uh, celebration last night? Did you get any celebratory meals? Twenty-one, twenty-seven unfurling shadow stacks for Sylvanas. Control point C coming up soon, but it's going to be level 20 for Gambit Gaming. With the five kills they've gotten, there is a roughly a little less than 3,000 experience in just heroic kill difference. Mercenaries, another 1,100 or so. Minions is like a 6k difference. Holy crap, that is a massive disparity. I mean, look at just the red... Oh, wait, oh. Leap from Sonya starts out this fight. The Gus from Falstead says no. We've got a good blessed shield onto our Tassadar, who's going to be able to pop the Archon form. Light Bomb comes out, and Rhaegar is the first one to go down. Johanna stunned to oblivion. Sylvanas throws a haunting wave out. She gets the mark onto maybe one of the enemy heroes. I didn't actually see. She's got 40 unfurling shadow stacks now. Isolation onto one enemy, but no level 20 contagion. Dahak is going to have to use Tumbling Claws to get away. Baby Will gets the essence out as well. Sylvanas able to throw that on Furling Shadow. Picks up another 15 stacks. But mid lane keep is going down. And it's looking like this might be the end of map number two. We might be going to that map three. We might just be heading over to a map number three in this uh, third best of three of the day. Some really good games here. And some really good plays between these two teams. But absolutely the core shielding is going to fall. Vala cannot get the Finland for her team. And that will be Sylvanas, uh, the lone... Wait, hold on, Vault? Okay, it doesn't count because Rhaegar just respawned. Anyways, that is going to be 10 to 1 in kills, a dominant Gambit Gaming map number 2. Well, she got halfway there, but halfway is not the gamble. How many stacks for Sylvanas? 119 or less? Oh, no, Ektar, we're we're literally, that's when you click on a name. Literally, Ektar, this is what we're talking about. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, there you go. I think that should grab it. There you go, that's my, that's my entire OBS, but whatever. Like, Ektar, literally, like, I have, I'm not talking about, like, clicking on the name. I'm literally talking that there are buttons next to the name. There's literally buttons next to the name. Funny story, uh, they forgot some important questions and so one of their people was refusing to sign off and then we've been scrambling today to try and get communication between us and my employer and them and from my point of view, it's not being handled well. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, Ektar's talking about something completely different. You turn those off to reduce clutter. <laughs> clutter? What a bad mod. <laughs> <laughs> clutter. I mean, Twitch chat is just clutter, isn't it? You turn those off because of misclicks? God, you guys got to get better APM. <laughs> Y'all need way better APM. Y'all need way better APM. That's that's my opinion. That's my opinion of the matter. What do you think about a bandit? What do you think about the mods and them having having to turn off mod buttons. Oh, he's giving me a look. Oh, he does not. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like it. He ain't cool with it. I have currently dropped 18,000 frames today, but it seems like it's been kind of all over the place, and it has not affected stream too much, which is what I like to see. Alrighty, chat. Uh, we did have a prime during that game. Who the hell's that? That's not what's-his-name, the grad student. Nah, I graduated. Must be the new one. The new one. It's supposed to be a crime set. Uh, no message, but thank you for the Prime Gaming for five months. I appreciate that very, very much, Jelly Gellis. <laughs> 
bandits like fire them, Kappa? No, nah, he told me to fire them, but I'm like, Bandit, you don't mod. You just sleep through the stream. So unfortunately, if Bandit would actually mod, then we we I would, but unfortunate. Uh do 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 Let's skip the gamble for this game, because I don't really see one that I like. Uh so yeah. Actually, you know what? It's a double boss map. I know what we're doing. Which team gets first boss? Uh, Smoke, Gambit, Gaming, or no boss taken? Now, I know you all struggle with uh, triple bets, but you know what? We're going to do a triple bet. Uh, but first, I need to run some ads, and then we will get into this game. <laughs> I never see the pin option unless I turn mod buttons on. Pin message? Oh, like to pin a message? Uh, I literally have a button for like a one second timeout. Invite open guest. I don't want to. I wanted to hover something else. Oh, purge. Oh, there's a purge one second. The timeouts are 10 minutes, one hour, eight hours, 24 hours. I see. I mean, the pin message is literally a hover button in my, in my stream. Like, if I hover ninja, I have pin this message or reply to this message. Did I push the add button? I did, okay. Yeah, I, if I hover your message, I can literally just pin it or I can just type slash pin and that's what I usually do, oopsies. I usually just type, I usually just type slash pin and then I type out the message I want pinned. Hmm. Fun games today, fun games today. Hope you're all having a good time. Thanks for everyone hanging out. Uh, be sure to drop a follow if you're not following. Granted, I'm saying all this while ads are running, so no one who's unsubbed or uh, whatever is going to hear it. Granted, there are people that watch uh, with ad blocker, which uh, go ahead and do that. I don't care. Get rid of them ads. I did. Uh, I did see that there's a there's a what's it called. Oh, my brain today. Uh, there's a new trailer for the Fallout game, and that's looking really freaking good. Fallout TV show is looking really, really interesting. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. All right, I think our ads are done, so let's get into it. Uh, map number three in this best of three series. Let's find out who's going to be the victor here in Alterac Pass. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, Murloc Mains and uh, Mucho Muridens. We've got Chromie played for Smoke, Leoric as well, Rhaegar Muridin, and Han Soap. Right side for Gambit Gaming will be your Anubarak, Anduin, Greymane, Sonya, and uh, Junkrat. Now, all right, chat. Big, big time. I need you. I need all of you to be paying attention here, all right? The big gamble. The big gamble for map number three. Which team is going to get first boss of the game? Which team will get first boss of the game? Will it be the side of smoke? Will it be Gambit Gaming? Or will no boss be achieved to either side? Get your gambles in. Once again, the first time for Chromie. Simple geometry on the Hanzo. Fail to end on death for Leoric. Totem and uh, Dwarf Toss for Rhaegar Muradin. Beetles for Anubarak. Power of Horde Shield for Anduin. Viciousness, I believe. Yeah, for the Grey Mane. Slam build for Sonya and extra own timers on the Junkrat. 2k on no boss. 420 on Gambit Gaming. Smoke has 1k. We got odds, chat. We got odds. Three choices. Panic. I know, right? Immediate panic. The anime speed lines are perfect for that. Alterac pass map number three. All right. So, uh, Leork, Sonya, top lane. Decent matchup there. Junkrat and Chromium bottom. Not sure who's really more annoying to deal with here. Junkrat or Chromium with the Pokedisplacement. 
from Junkrat, or, well, I guess just the Pokin Sandblast from Baby Whale. Uh, we have Alfie working on this camp. Rhaegar to do the same thing on the left. Alfie's going to be quite quicker, as he is Greymane, and Greymane has quite good damage. Nubrak is going to rotate down to bottom lane. Baby Whale is able to wiggle away. Nubrak with a nice impale. Concussion Mine is going to be a goalie, and Baby Whale is going to be sniped by Junkrat. Gambit Gaming is going to take the first kill in the map, and I don't know if that's going to sway anyone on your gambles. Bosses will be up here in 3 minutes 30 seconds. Lamby is going to finish out this camp. Slowly but surely. Nubrak burrows into mid. MJH. Hun Soap is washed. Grandmain Dark Flight's in. They've got the Impaler. Excuse me. They've got the uh, the Null Pack in mid, which is going to reduce structure armor uh, to negative 25. I forget. Is it negative 20 or negative 25? I always forget. I think it's negative 20 is the max out for the Null Pack camp, but I think we might find out here in mid lane because these Nulls are on this fort, and I don't think Chromie can clear it out quick enough. Uh, 16... 20. I need one more attack. I don't know. All right. I don't remember. My brain's my brain's forgetting so much today. So here's the big question at the end of the at the end at the end of the day here, chat. We're 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 not like close to the end of stream. Still got a few more hours of casting. But I am getting hungry, and the big question is: Do I go for a burrito, or do I go for for pizza? It's a really good burrito place that I could go to as well. It is minus 20. Thank you, baby. Well, I honestly couldn't remember. I was like, does it go to negative 25? But I was like, that's a lot. All right. Just minus just minus 20 armor on the structures. Uh, Junkrat will go boom pow. So I might see a uh, concussion mine build for him. Seven talents here almost here. Zero to two in kills. Favorite inside of Gambit Gaming. And Avast is going to land the Spectral Leech or the Drain Hope, excuse me. Spectral Leech is a talent. Slams from Sony are dealing quite a bit of damage, and it seems like the orcs gonna have to back away. Nubrak can solo this camp. He's needs some beetles to distract the jailers. Unfortunately, Shunanananan jumps on in on this Muradin and is going to delay things out. Oh, Taco Bell, Taco. There is a Taco Bell by the Rayleigh's grocery store that I'm gonna be going to. I could get Taco Bell. I haven't had Taco Bell this month. I usually get fast food like once a month, maybe. You know, sometimes you wake up on a Monday and you're like, I, I partied a little too hard last night. I need McDonald's breakfast. But it's rare. Del Taco? There's no Del Taco up here. The closest Del Taco is in Carson. Uh, it's in the Carson area, and that's a 45-minute drive down the mountain, roughly. So, hour and a half round trip for Del Taco. No, thank you. Now, an hour and a half round trip for Costco. Now, that's worth it. Which, that the Costco's right next to the Del Taco. Sort of. Objective phase channel by the Anubarak. Mid lane fort is going to be going down. The Persistent Siege from Gambit Gaming is yielding quite an advantage as they took down that structure I mentioned. But I do want to point out, as we're looking at the in-game timer, we are 20 seconds away from bosses being up. Alrighty. Scatter attempted. Northern Touch is able to grab this objective with the help of some friends. Here come the raiders from the side of Drek'thar, the Horde Raiders. We have a leap onto Sonya. She's okay. Greymane was taking a bit of a nap. He rolls forward into human form, gets a, cu a couple autos onto the Hanzo, and that's the end of it. I've never had Del Taco, to be honest. Never had it. The one time we were supposed to get it was uh, when... Me and two friends went down to Carson to go see the Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City movie uh, on release day, which was like the night before Thanksgiving. And we, no joke, went to Del Taco. And as we got in the drive through line, the, sh the lights on Del Taco all shut off. And like someone was like far down the line, literally got out of their truck, came down and was going car to car, asking people to back up because apparently like there was like one person working and they just had it and they just shut everything off and left 
Like, they didn't take the dude's money or anything like that. Like, he placed an order, and then, like, he watched them literally leave. And he's like, I guess you guys should leave, too. That was the one time I ever tried to get Del Taco. Entomb from Lior. Oh, wait, no, sorry. Not even level 10s here. He was just the flank rotation looked really good from Krenovas. Unable to make something. Actually, they do make something happen here. A nice scatter finished out for Hanzo. Simple, simple geometry done. Gray Man and Ubrek fall, and that'll be two kills as Sonya worked on top lane fort. The objective opens up bottom lane a little bit, but double fort going down. This is not a bad situation for the side of Gambit Gaming. Granted, they lose two, but hey, not that bad. Let me check out the experience difference. Actually, that is, wow, two to five in kills, but look at this. There's a 347 difference in experience. Uh-oh, uh-oh, chat. No tacos, yeah. We ended up going to, there's a, there's a Whole Foods in that area, so we ended up going to Whole Foods and getting sandwiches from, because Whole Foods has like a bunch of like pre-made sandwiches and my friends are vegan. It's the reason we were going to Del Taco because at that time they started doing the Beyond Meat. So it worked out for a lot of my vegan friends. Leap in from the Sonya. Hanzo Dragon Arrow coming through as well. Lambie so very low, doesn't get the self-cast Ancestral. And the boss is stolen away by Gambit Gaming. Gambit Gaming steals the boss. First boss over to our red squad. Gambit Gaming has this for the bottom lane. Seven to two in kills. Chromie about to respawn, so is Rhaegar. Excuse me. Sonya going to top to manage that minion wave. And uh, let's see. Let's see, 13 talent to your advantage. Go for the threats, the only thing available on Gambit Gaming's side for heroics. Ancestral Entomb and Slowing Sands. Well, the Slowing Sands are already out. The Orc looking for the Entomb. Creates some terrain, but he's in a really awkward spot. And it looks like Greymane's go for the throat will be able to confirm the kill onto him. Boss and bottom. This is slamming its way through the fort here. Murden Dwarf tosses to try and get some armor. Ancestral will connect in time. Sonya's still split pushing in top. Murden does go down. 25 second death timer. Anubarak's able to mount up and he will not go down. Mid lane keep is very low here. Anything can be tacos. How would you make tacos out of pasta and bolognese? Because I don't I don't see I don't see where you're getting the I don't see how you're making a taco. There's no there's no like there's no vessel. Like, pizza, sure, can be a taco. Dragon's arrow and tomb. Leap from Sony is the answer. Anduin's the one to go down. Murd inside the cocoon right there. MJH getting a little bit low. Lambi as well. We have Greymane just uh, chunking through the enemies. Finland. Is going to be picked up by the side of Gamba Gaming, and I think they're going to take this map... This is the fastest Alter Alterac pass map I've ever casted. I honest to God think this is the fastest Alterac pass map I've ever casted in my entire career. Holy hell. Stick it in a tortilla, but where are you going to get a tortilla at an Italian restaurant? Oh, GG's. It was a pain to play. I think y'all did pretty good, though. I think y'all did pretty good. GG's. GG's. Uh, I don't think it was too bad, but yeah, unfortunate. I think y'all played pretty well. It was it was just, they, they just ran it down. Holy hell, they just ran that down. Those are just one of those games where you just have to mentally just kind of accept, like, you just kind of have to mentally accept that, that you're not gonna win it. And I think that, like, I think some of those games are important because if you if you approach it where like oh my god this this is probably a loss they outdrafted us we flubbed or we we blundered something i think if you play it from the angle of of we're probably not going to win this let's have some fun those are the situations where you where you have the best chance to fight back in my opinion like when it comes to mentals i feel like when you when you approach things from the like i used to i i like when i used to play high school tennis like that's that's how i would approach things like we would play against teams that are higher division 
and are known for being better than us. And I would always go to my, my because I played doubles, I'd, I'd go to my doubles partner and be like, look, Chris, his name was also Chris. I'd be like, look, we're probably not going to win this. Let's go out there, have some fun. Let's do some weird slice serves. And we won one or two games. Like, we won, like, overall a couple of times because we just approached it having fun. And that actually took all the weight of playing against someone that's way better than you. Now, of course, all that's different. But that's just, that was just, that's just my approach.